What is up, everybody? It is Alex from Heavy New York calling from Zoom again, and this time we are here with Christian of Megahurst. It is great for you to be here today. Thanks for coming on the show today. Yeah, thanks, man, for having me. A pleasure. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> man. This new album, which, forgive my horrible pronunciation mistakes, but in Twerfels Namen, on a scale of 1 to 10, how did I do? Yeah, that was close in Teufel's Namen. <laughs> uh, in Teufel's Namen, I was close. Uh, but uh, despite not being able to pronounce it, I was listening to it, and it is absolutely uh, a fantastic album from start to finish. Was there sort of like a vision in mind with the making of this album? Was it meant to just be a continuation of Comet, the previous one, or was this meant to be kind of like a new beginning? Um, I wouldn't call it a new beginning. It's uh, it's Maybe it's a... Um, 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 a little we, we we evolved a little uh, with this we we uh i was trying to you know you know to to put more guitars in front and or uh, use use more guitars and uh, i did, i don't know if i succeeded in that mm -hmm. but it should be a little bit more heavy than than uh, than commit like like a little bit returning to our roots um yeah, and I, I really, I really, I'm totally happy with the turn, uh, with it, how it turned out. You know, it's, uh, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely uh, one of the best uh, albums to come from Megahertz, and I feel like you know, with every Megahertz album, when you compare an album like uh, Five to like the debut of uh, Hertz work, and you compare that to Comet or Zombieland, like every album kind of like has its own rules. So experimenting with your sound has always been part of the songwriting process for Megahertz, right? Absolutely, because it you know it, it makes the whole thing interesting, um, and I um, um, and I always try to you to 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 use a lot of samples to create atmospheres, and uh, um, a lot of times I start the songs with uh, you know with bass lines or some some electronic stuff to have the atmosphere, and then afterwards add the guitars, and during the whole process. Uh, it's kind of weird, but the, you know the electronics, electronic gets uh, more in the background, and and uh, and the guitars start to get more important. So I know that a lot of bands are not doing it this way. That just you know they they play a riff and they build the song around this riff, but it's uh, totally uh, different. Uh, what, what, when when I write songs, you know, I, I need this. I need to have the atmosphere. Um, before I, I I do the guitars uh, to have some kind of fundament to 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 put the guitars on it and and to sit on top, you know. Yeah, well, it, it's such a breadth of, as somebody who's done thousands of interviews, many of them being with guitar players who have all told me it always starts off with a riff. This is a breath of fresh air to hear. It, for once, it does not start with a riff. It starts with an atmosphere. It, it, it took thousands of interviews, but I finally got that one answer. So thank you for this amazing accomplishment I could put under my belt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah in fact i i do have a silly question i wanted to ask i ask all guitar players this because a lot of them do tell me that it starts off with a riff do you think that we will ever run out of riffs one day that's a good question <laughs> you know i don't know if there are um uh, if there is a one one combination of zero three five six that hasn't been used I, I'm not sure, uh, but uh, I don't think so. I mean, it's you know, it's a. Uh, you could ask me, uh, uh, is there a point in time when we're gonna run out of melodies because it's only 12, 12 tones and only uh, seven different ones in one in one uh, uh, scale? You know, I don't know. I don't think so because it's it's all it, it's not only the technical thing about. Um, combining chords or combining notes to create a riff it's it's the feeling you have and this makes it i don't know um i don't think it will ever end yeah it's funny you mentioned that too because the atmosphere that uh that you say that you needed the i feel like atmosphere is um almost like very uh broad because atmosphere could come from a riff pattern or a chord progression or certain melodies so when you say atmosphere that you needed what exactly is part of that is you needed do you need like almost sound effects that create an atmosphere do you need almost like a present melody 
whether it's coming from guitar or keys or whatever, what what would you say defines atmosphere that's needed for Megahertz? Um, a lot of times I, I start with using samples or uh, looking for a special sound that you know that that jumps on me and that that creates that kind of spark in my head which makes me go on. Um, um, yeah, that's that, that's a very important thing for me, and uh, it you know it it could be some kind of strange sound that even doesn't mean a lot to other people, but for me in this special moment it does, and it makes me play something, or it makes me play I don't know a kind of bass line which I afterwards double with the guitars. Uh, to forget the baseline afterwards, uh, you know, it's 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 an it's an evolving uh, process. So if, if you can't tell what's next, mm -hmm. has there ever been a time because you mentioned like samples and you know you could get any samples from any MIDI controller or you know any uh, 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 preamp or something like that? But have you ever been like out of your studio and like managed to hear sound effects or sort of like an atmosphere? that maybe you had to like just immediately take out your phone and record and that maybe that maybe laid down a groundwork needed you mean you mean like field recordings yeah <laughs> i never I, I really never did uh, because it's you know this these are atmospheres of course but i'm um, i'm more like talking about atmosphere created created by 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 real sounds not 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 the the uh, surroundings outside my house or, or something, you know. I'm just, you know, it's 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 it could be. Um, there's a new sound pack coming out, and I'm I'm checking this out, and uh, and in, and in, and it in, 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 inspires me to create something new. Whenever you are inspired to create something new, or really just the inspiration, the creative spark, in a way, do you believe inspiration can be sought out? Can you actually go out and look? for inspiration or does it just kind of have to strike you i think it it, it needs to strike you and it has it, it is uh, it has a lot to do with your with your state of mind you know there's a saying that uh, that uh, that the, the, um, only a hungry musician is a good musician i don't believe in that at all because when i'm you know when uh, when i'm i don't know depressed or something i don't know i'm not feeling good I'm not ready to write some music, not at all. So, uh, because, you know, where should this power and this energy come from that I wanna, I, that I'm trying to put in the music? You know, what, so when you're down and uh, you don't have, have no energy um, anymore. So um, that's, yeah, but, but you you can, you can go on and, um, um, what what does it mean and and try to find inspiration in in looking through different sound packs or different i don't know what um that's maybe possible but as i said before uh it's, it also the, the most important part is the is the is the state of mind are you happy or not you know yeah are you feeling good or not well, it's funny too. I was just right before you. I was doing an interview with uh, Kelly Schaefer, who sings for the band Atheist and uh, Till the Dirt, and uh, he was telling me that you know, like when times are at their worst, art is at its best. And I mean, it is a uh, cruel duality sometimes. But it's interesting to hear you say that, like when you are in like a very shit state of mind, the creativity doesn't flow. Uh, n not at all. Not at all. You know, the, 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 that's why uh, the, the the pandemic was the worst time for me. I was really down and I, I, w I was trying to force myself to to be creative and you know um, like uh, like other colleagues said they they, they they tried to 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 write new material and I, I really tried to do that and I uh, and I I did kind of but it, uh, you know I'm calling this my 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 uh, my uh, What's it? My, my file of bullshit, you know, it's totally unusable, uninspired, um, useless material without any soul, you know, that's 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 maybe the the, the main part. Well, so, a, a really bad time for us this 
COVID thing. Yeah. And, and he told me, and Kelly right before told me that it was the best time for him on a creative level. So it's so good. It's so, or not good, but like, it's so interesting to hear the different perspectives and the different, um, and the different, because you're not the first person to tell me this. Oh man, I was, I couldn't do it. I, I couldn't do anything during the pandemic. I just wasn't in the state of mind. And then other people tell me that they were finally able to, you know, get this stuff, yeah, yeah. Off, this stuff off. So it's, I, uh, I, I really, I really had the feeling, you know, I'm, I'm not talking about this guy that, that you, that you interviewed before, but I really had the feeling when I, when I, during these, these times, I, um, I, I read, uh, statements in the, in the social media that that a lot of people are saying that oh that's great because we're doing new material and um uh, and we're going to use the time blah 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 and um i really had sometimes had the feeling they're saying this to keep the fans alive you know and i i, I don't know it could be a misunderstanding but to me it would if i had if I, I, I had uh, um, I had said that it would have been a, a pure lie, yeah. you know. It's just it's not, simply not the truth. Yeah, you know, and, and that's what I think your music does. It does uh, definitely reflect the truth in a way. But I'm curious too because with you as well as um, Alexander going by the names of XT and Lex, I thought maybe like yeah. you has megahertz either been like a direct form of self-expression is this expressing your personal life or is megahertz like do you almost in a way with your use of you know makeup and all this like do you almost feel like you in a way portray characters or alter egos outside of your personal selves not for me not for me it's 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 more like uh like uh i don't know if this, this sounds funny but it's it's, it's uh, for me the, the whole makeup thing is 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 like uh like a, a a sign or like um uh, like showing how much we're into it you know and uh and uh, we yeah it's i mean it's it's the whole thing it's 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 how it looks how this is i mean this is kind of art too we we always have a so, uh, some kind of look of the band that feels uh, that, that that fits the era of the album uh and um this is really part of the whole thing of of expressing ourselves. Yeah, you know, in, in Teufelsnamen we have this we have this preacher like look, because it fits to the title, it fits to everything, it fits to the it fits to the cover, and it makes sense. Yeah, well, it's funny that you mentioned that too, because I was gonna ask because like every, with every album, it almost seems like it's not just what different sounds are we gonna get, but it is almost a visual experience because I know that like you know. Uh, um, with albums such as Hertz work, which I know that there was a part one and part two with it, but with uh, Hushler and uh, Zombieland and whatnot, everything had its own signature sort of a uh, signature sort of uh, visual behind it. Do you think of this vision before you even have music written, or does the vision kind of come into mind, at, or what, does the vision come while you're making the album, or are you not able to get this vision until everything is complete when it's mixed and mastered and all that fun stuff? No, it's it's uh, it's, it's uh, it happens on the way. You know, everything happens on this one way that uh, is, is heading to the to the release of the album. Um, yeah, well, that's what it, it's it's a very natural thing. Mm. I don't know how to explain it. It just happens. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you get the idea, you know. And uh, as well as as as, as the album, I, I wanted to have a. Uh, I mean, I mean, it looks kind of medieval. Uh, um, I know, and it, it maybe it's not a typical Megats album uh, cover. I don't know. Uh, it could be maybe a, a cover as well, uh, used by uh, some power metal band because it's of its medieval look. But I didn't, I didn't um, want to have this uh, this 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 cover because of the atmosphere it creates. But I wanted, first of all, we're all very huge uh, Game of Thrones fans, uh. and that's you know that's like the twink of the night is it the really really expression that uh it does the, the funny side of this whole thing and uh but I, I um i felt like we need a a platform to put all the symbolism in it and that that felt kind of perfect because it's it's like uh it's like like we're making a little bit fun of game of thrones because you're using the Iron Throne, but not with the swords, but, but with weapons, the, the, uh, modern weapons. And we have this zombie Pope sitting on it, this totally insane person. And uh, 
yeah, it, it, it expresses a lot of a lot of uh, um, uh, symbolism for us. Have people mistaken you for a black metal band, though? No, no, they didn't. Really? <laughs> I, I hope I never will. <laughs> oh. Are you? Are you mean because of, because of the makeup? Yeah. Yeah. Well, the, well uh, the, the, of, of course. The, 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 now and then there's a comment on uh, Facebook that they say you look this look like war painting or something. Uh, mm. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, corpse painting. It's maybe, like, they make it corpse painting, right? They're making they're making uh, uh, fun of us. But that's okay because yeah. we're making fun as well. <laughs> yeah, it's so funny you mentioned that because I'm not gonna lie. If I if I posted a picture of this, people would easily mistake you guys for a Gorgoroth or something like that. But um, okay. the, the satire element where you kind of do have like this commentary that you offer. Uh, there's a really uh, interesting band that makes fun of power metal called Nano War of Steel. I don't know if you heard of them, but uh, they're from oh, yeah. Italy. They're yeah, we played with them. Oh. Oh, so there you go. So like, you 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 definitely do have like a commentary that uh, is awesome in metal. You you you. I feel like your music is almost. Have you ever read the website, the Hard Times, uh, the satire website? That's what your catalog could be like. You should look that up. It's the funniest stuff you'll ever okay. read. Yeah. <laughs> I will. But the the thing is, despite having a comedic aspect, your music is very technically impressive. When I listen to like how this stuff is arranged, and you know, when I listen to the new album, and you know, you have all these songs, like the, every song flows perfectly. The atmosphere is very much there. The riffs are cutthroat. So, is there like a moment of seriousness where like you kind of need to put aside the satire, the comedic aspects, in order to create what you do? Yeah, sure. Because you know, you want um, I want to, I, I want to um, come down in the morning after one recording session, and and and, and power on my my computer and 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 crank the crank the, the speakers, and I want to be impressed of this. You know, this is the moment of truth. Uh, if you 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 turn it up and you immediately know it's cool what you did the night before, or it's 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 totally crap, and. Uh, this is it, it, um, what you're saying is exactly what I'm looking for. I'm, I'm looking for this big autobahn that goes through the song. That you know, that's this this red line that that picks you up in the with a with a catchy intro, and you know, powers through the whole thing, and uh, and never lets you ne never lets you down. Never never let uh, lets you fall. Ne ne never drops you. Or, 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 I'm sorry, my English is so bad, but yeah, no. yeah, my, you, know what I, you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. My mom is from your area of Germany, and you speak it better than her. So, uh, uh, oh, thank you. <laughs> sorry, mother. Say hello to your mom. Yeah, I, I won't be sending her this interview. <laughs> but um, <laughs> okay. the final question I wanted to ask you, though, is actually because Megahertz has been labeled, and I'm sure maybe even you guys have heard it, as, you know, an industrial band, and I definitely see, like, the sort of industrial elements in there. But industrial is such a vague genre now because ministry sounds very different from throbbing gristle. Frontline assembly sounds very different from skinny puppy. And, you know, you coming from Germany, you guys sound nothing like Rammstein or Fear Factory or Static X, which has been considered industrial. So what is in industrial music that really has to give the band that definition? Um... I don't know. We 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 just you know we uh in in the very first beginning we, we were totally inspired by Clawfinger, um, by their approach to music and by this this cold atmosphere, and uh, uh, as well as uh, as as using kind of rap vocals, you know they, nobody has really done this before, and. Uh, and we even topped this. We, you know, in Germany, at, at, at the time we were starting this band, um, every band wanted to sound like an American band, like a U.S. band, and and, and there, there has hardly been anyone to 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 use German lyrics. So it was a it was a very um, it was kind of creative, you know, to 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 do this. You know, it, it was in a in, in a time when everybody was listening to I don't know. To Guns and Roses, and to you know, to this, uh, what I call to this warm, typical American oh, yeah. sound, and and that was that was the way to go. To everybody here in um, and and in the Munich area, it tried to sound like one of those I don't know Bon Jovi's or uh, or um, um, 
one of those huge american bands yeah and and we said that's boring that's i don't know this and um we have to try something different and so we we we, we are we were like uh, in you know it's it, it's basically a similar story to rammstein they were they were inspired by uh, by Clawfinger as well and uh but they were even more clever that, uh, that they were much more clever than than, than we were because they were hiring the producer <laughs> Because, and we didn't have the money for that, you know. <laughs> so, so that's you know this this kind of cold atmosphere combining samples and heavy guitars with German lyrics that are um, no, not sung but but uh, kind of rapped. That was something very new, yeah. and uh, you know it it, it also. It also was the t was the it was the nineties. Techno was big, and uh, uh, and for us all, um, it really was a totally natural thing to 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 um, and, and, um, you know the way was not far from techno riffs to metal riffs, but I mean, I mean in techno they were played by bass lines by synths. And um, and even similar riffs uh, um, could be played by heavy guitars, and so for for us it was like you know there was a saying when we did when we did um, Kopfschuss when uh, you know when when uh, when one of us came to the studio and said ah, I've I've written a new song you want to check it out and and they were playing the songs they said ah oh, it's techno with the with distorted guitars again <laughs> yeah. you know it was like a running gag you know all the time we always used the phrase uh techno with the with heavy guitars and um yeah. which it, it was basically yeah well uh, you know the band in germany that's taken off right now electric callboy i mean uh they've uh they've uh, also been kind of having like a similar element in what they've done too. So right. I think techno and uh, heavy metal is actually a really good combination. I think it's because it's very uh, rhythmic driven in, in a way. Like we're just as in, we, I think they kind of hit the same, they hit the, they may not hit the same notes, but they hit the same parts in here, you know? Yeah, that's right. And I think, and I think it's, it's, uh, uh, it's um, techno, it, what was invented by, by, by DJs in, in Berlin and, and, uh, uh, mainly, but uh, uh, you know the the groove and the atmosphere that uh, comes from techno is 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 very this German thing, you know. Yeah. Um, we, I don't think we are very good in in grooving like you Americans do, uh, but we can do this thing, mm. and this is this feels very natural to us, you know. This form the floor beat, and you know this is um, I mean it's it's as groovy as the, um, another approach. But it's something that is maybe more natural to us. I don't know. Yeah. Well, I think groove is like kind of like I've heard people call like, you know, Dimebag Daryl's guitar playing is very groovy. And that sounds nothing like techno music at all. But techno music is also very groovy. I've listened to and, uh, Black it's, a, it's, it's another. Sure. I mean, both is, is groove. And, and, and what the American bands, of course, do is, is brilliant in, uh, in rhythmic wise. And, and uh, it always had a, has a great groove. But it's. Uh, groove is not always groove. It's there are different kinds for, for my um, as as I see it, see it different kind of grooves. It's um, it's um, um, because um, it's the way that you express your rhythmic feelings, and that you know one band grooves different like another band, but they both both groove perfectly. Yeah, but it's another. But it's two different things. And this is this is what I'm talking about. Yeah, I mean, there's groovy melody and there's groovy rhythm too. So that it, sure. so you know that that's what I'm gonna name this episode of the show Groove with Megahertz. Um, so <laughs> right. uh, before we go, I want to thank you so much for your time today and for such another awesome album. Is there just anything else with Megahertz that you'd like uh, to promote with the release of this new album in terms of shows coming up or what else we could be expecting for the near future? Absolutely. So we're going. Uh, um, September the 20th, uh, our European tour starts. Uh, it's going a, a, a little more, I think it's 22 dates or something. So we're going from Barcelona uh, to all, all the European countries and uh, um, until um, Great Britain. And then uh, the last show will be in, in Munich.
Awesome. And maybe hopefully a U.S. tour in the future. Hopefully. It, that would be so cool. That yeah. would be so cool, man. We have to make it happen. <laughs> but uh, thank you so much, everybody. We are here with Megahertz and Taufruz Namen. Be sure to pick that up coming this August. This is Alex from Heavy New York, and we will see you next time. Thank you, Alex.